limitations on the Lord, you'll live a life of limitations. Amen. God is as big and as broad and as amazing and as powerful and as willing as we allow him to be. Because we have a choice. Amen. Um, today we're going to talk about coming out of survival. Um, something that the Lord has been putting on my heart for a while. Um, you know, for each and every one of us, um, we lived a life of constant survival. Coming from the backgrounds that most of us have, and even, even individuals that don't have a background in drug abuse or running the streets or um, gang life or anything like that, um, they still lived a life of survival. Um, for me, you know, my entire life, um, I grew up in a, a very rough, dangerous neighborhood. I grew up learning to watch my back, um, look over my shoulder everywhere I go, um, choose the right place to sit down in restaurants, choose the right place to sit down wherever I'm at. Um, grocery shopping with firearms at all times. Um, didn't get a haircut without a gun. Everywhere I went, I was on survival mode. My life was all about survival, um, protecting myself, protecting um, what I've gained and covering my butt from everybody that I had done wrong. Amen. Um, all of us have a story. We all have a testimony of things that we survived. Each and every person in this room has been a survivor of something. We've all had near-death experiences. We've all had overdoses. Um, we've all spent time in jails and prisons. And we had to live a life of survival in that. We had to survive. We came out of that. Um, God has allowed us to come to a place where we no longer have to live a life of survival. Amen. We have been given the opportunity to live a life of surrender, peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, it's an ongoing process. You know, those old, those old things, they die hard sometimes, you know. Like, I still go places, and I'm still scoping the thing out, like looking to make sure that everything's good in the place. And I'm like, who told me that? <laughs> I don't have to worry about those things anymore. I don't have to worry about those people coming to get me. I don't have to worry about anything anymore. I can go wherever I want. I can do whatever I need to do because my God owns it all, and he's got my back. So I don't have to look back there anymore. Amen? I don't have to position myself somewhere to make sure that I'm covered because God's got me covered now. Amen? But the devil's always going to try and come back and bring those old man tendencies and think that you need this or you need to do that or you've got to cover this. And I'm not saying don't use wisdom. You know, you don't get yourself in a place in the middle of the night where you're walking just dumbfounded and not paying attention to nothing because there are some idiots out there. Um, but if you're walking in divine order, divine position with God, nothing can touch you and nobody can touch you. Amen. God's got you covered. Um, so in this, there's a place where we have been trained our entire lives to survive. You know, I don't, I, I'm speaking a lot for me. I know a lot of people can relate. Um, I learned to survive at a young age. I learned to survive and make a way for myself at a very young age. Um, and it took a long time for that kind of stuff to be broken off of me and completely trust God and surrender all to him and know that I don't have to worry anymore. My life is in his hands. My kid's life, it's in his hands. My family's life is in his hands. And everything from here on out is his. And whatever happens is up to him. Amen. My plans don't matter. My decisions um, that I think I need to make don't matter. If they don't align with him, they need to be thrown out. Um, so there's a place we need to come to where there is like a complete severing and emptying of everything that was us and allow him to take over completely in every single area, every area. I had to come to the realization that everything I had been told pretty much my entire life was a lie who I was, what I was, my identity, um, the way the world was, the way things operate was all a lie. Um, for a lot of people, that's not a very easy thing to do. But when you get touched by Jesus, it makes it a whole lot easier. And that's why we encourage everybody, especially at the very beginning, to dive into those prayers. 
to make sure you're doing those prayers because it is an axe to the wood, just chopping away and cutting stuff out, cutting stuff down to make way for you to get touched by the Lord so that it's easier to believe and receive who you truly are, which is a son, a daughter, a warrior for the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's go to Ephesians 2. There is a place that we have to realize that we're not here by coincidence. God did not um, accidentally put us here in this place. There was a purpose. Each one of us has been handpicked. And everybody needs to grab a hold of the severity of that. I mean, ima imagine if you will. I know it's kind of hard. You hear it in passing or whatever. Imagine if you will that the God of all the universe looked down from heaven and said, you're coming, you're coming, you're coming. I love you. I'm going to pull you out of all that garbage you've gotten yourself into because I love you and I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. And there's more for you. And he puts you in a place. And when you look at it like that, it's almost like how in the world could you not dive all the way in? Amen? How could you not dive all the way in? How could you go back to the nonsense knowing that the greatest being in all of the universe, the creator of the universe, the God of heaven and earth, the one who made it all, said, Jason, I have a spot for you, man. Come on. It's like, wow. It's phenomenally amazing and people take it for granted every day, and we have got to stop taking it lightly, man. People are dying. People are in need of rescue. People are throwing their lives away for nonsense when they have so much that God wants to give them. And not just for you, but for other people. There are people that only each person in this room can reach and minister to. They may make it to hell because of the decisions you make. And if you make the right decisions, they can make it into heaven and have the same freedom that you've been given. Amen. So we've got to take it serious. Ephesians 2 verse 1. Hallelujah. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great, great love in which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus." that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and, not, and that not of yourselves, it is a, the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Hallelujah, what an honor and a blessing. Everybody needs to pay attention to what exactly was said. Basically, what he is saying is, is all of us, his, all of us were dirty and idiots at one time in our life. He handpicked us, cleaned us up, brought us out to share every blessing that there is in this world that each person could have. Amen. So you've got to grab hold of that when you're thinking about running, when you're thinking about going back to the old life, when the lies of the enemy come in, thinking that things look better over there. We all know that there is a process to coming out of survival and living in surrender. Amen. You sowed in the world for me, it was 30 plus years. All right. So it's not like I'm going to say, Lord, I'm yours. Um, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do. Now get rid of everything that I did before and make me completely brand new with no struggles, no influences, no problems, no issues, no nothing. It's a great prayer to pray, um, but you don't learn much from that kind of a situation. Amen. And the process of conversion from su survival to surrender, it builds strength along the way so that you're able to withstand 
every test that comes down the road. If God gave you everything at one time, when things go wrong down the road, you're going to have no skills and no training to be able to make it through the tests that come. Amen? So we know that it is a battle. It takes hard work. It takes pressing in. It takes obedience. It takes making mistakes. It takes repenting. It takes getting up and going after the Lord with all your heart every single day. Amen? We all started in a place of survival, but God has handpicked us and showed us the way to live a fruitful life of surrender. And this is the place that he's brought each one of us to, to learn the way to surrender. Amen? So grab a hold of it, be obedient, and do what you're asked to do. Know that you all, we all, put ourselves in the situations that we're in. We made the choices we made, so we have to take responsibility for that. I can't do it for you. I can't do it for you. I can't do it for you. Everybody made their choices. I had to do it for me. I had to die the death. I had to fight the fights. I had to go through the trials, the tribulations. I had to sow my brains out until there was nothing left of me, and he took over. And I'm telling you from, you know, my own experience, just so everybody knows, I, you know, for, for me personally, who I was, I'm an idiot by nature. Uh, uh, I mess everything up. That's who my old man is. I make all the mistakes. I abuse and use everybody. I trample everybody. Um, I destroy things. But as a new creation in Christ, having the mind of Christ, everything is made new. And now, there's nothing but blessing coming. And going through all those hard times and failures and problems and issues and fighting through and relying on him the whole entire time, and diving into his presence, trusting in his word, trusting in his prayers, trusting in this place, being obedient to this place, and doing everything I was asked to do, sowing, I have reaped. I have reaped beyond measure in every area of my life. And I'm not talking about just financially. I'm talking about spiritually. I'm talking about um, health. I'm talking about family. I'm talking about relationships. And I'm talking about the blessing of knowing that there are people out there that are going to heaven because I was obedient to the Lord. And that's what it's all about. You know, God will bring all the other stuff, the kids, the family, the money, the cars, the vehicles, the driver's licenses. He'll bring it all. But all that stuff means absolutely nothing if you're not rescuing people. Amen? So when you come, there has to be a place where you acknowledge that you have screwed everything up. You have thrown everything away. And God will give it back to you when you need it. Amen? Your priority must be Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus. Period. You're here to seek. You're here to dive in. You're here to learn about him. You're here to let him get rid of all of you and fill you up with all of him. Amen? And then he'll give you the things that you need as you need them. He'll restore your kids when it's time. He'll restore your finances when it's time. You need to chase him, and you need to chase saving souls, not chase a job, not chase a man, not chase a woman, and not chase vehicles and driver's licenses and all that stuff. He'll bring it in the time that it's needed. Amen? So we know that in this coming out of survival, there's got to be a severing of all the old. There's got to be a place where you cancel all the old because you cannot bring the old into the new. Amen? If you try and bring the old into the new, the new's not going to last. Because the old will take over. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will, will honor me the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. So does everybody understand exactly what that means? That means in your hard times, in your rough times, in your tough times, he is going to give you everything you need. Amen. We are to seek him. We are to praise him. We are to bless him. And no matter what you're going through, he will show up and show out. And this is the mindset that we have to keep in order to stay out of survival. Because survival tells us 
oh my gosh, things are going wrong. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to fix this. I got to go over here and do this. That's what our carnal, natural brain tells us. I got to fix it. The mind of Christ tells you, stay out of it. Step back. Move out of the way. Shut up. And bless him. Amen? Bless him. Because when you bless him, clarity comes. And a knowing of what to do or what not to do comes. Amen? Again, he is trying to do a new thing. The old mentality, the old mindset, it has got to be severed. We have to come to the realization that we can bring absolutely nothing with us into the new from our old. Amen? And I'm not saying that, you know, things that we, lessons we learned, you know, out there in the world and things that we learned um, aren't going to help us in our spiritual walk. So it says to use, we use the wisdom of the world for the kingdom of heaven. Amen? To keep us from doing stupid stuff and falling into things that we know we shouldn't be doing or to get ourselves in. We don't walk around like idiots. We learned a lot out there in the streets and in the world for a reason. Amen? But we use it for the good. We use it for the kingdom. We don't use it for a survival and uh, an old man tendency, an old man life. Amen? So it's one thing to know what you are supposed to be doing. It's a complete, completely different thing to actually do what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? A lot of people know I should be doing this, I should be doing that, I should be making these decisions, I shouldn't be eating that, I shouldn't be eating this, um, I should be eating this, or I should be eating that, and they just don't do it. There's no discipline. Um, those are things that, you know, obviously when you first come in and you're out of the world and all that stuff, it's, it's a process, you know what I'm saying? But there's got to be a desire for righteousness and for goodness and there has to be a heart chasing after that and a heart that is saying, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I know it's not going to happen overnight, but work with me here. Amen? And, you know, that was when I came in, man, that was my main prayer was, Lord, whatever it is, I'll do it. I don't care what it is, I'll do it. I surrender, I give you all, and I made mistakes every day. But I made less mistakes every day because my heart was truly on doing the right thing. I was sick of my old life. I was tired of it. I couldn't do it anymore. I didn't want it. I didn't want anything to do with it. I was tired of the misery, the torment. I was tired of everybody hiding everything anytime I ever came around. I was tired of never being allowed to go places. I was tired of being on the run. I was tired of watching my back. I was tired of it all. It was like, Lord, either change me or kill me because I can't live like this anymore. I just can't do it. Um, and each day, there would be change. There would be a process of change. Things would could, they would start to go away. And over a long process, I looked back and I was like, my goodness, who am I? <laughs> it was like this huge change, man. And it's like now I go places and I tell people my testimony and stuff like that and they think I'm lying. It's like there's no way you were running Orange Blossom Trail and running with gangs and toting guns everywhere you went and selling big time drugs and doing all this stuff. There's no way. There's, you look like some herb um, out, of a, out of a nerd movie or something like that. I was like, God works miracles, man. I don't receive the nerd thing, though, but child of the most high God. Amen? Um, but he does, man. He, he cleans you up, and he works a miracle. And before you know it, it's like, man, I'm not anywhere near like what I used to be. And some of you probably already see it. I mean, I've seen it in people being here for two weeks, three weeks. Man, they're diving in like crazy, and there's miracles happening. God is on the move, man. And that's the key. How much you put in is how much he's going to put in. If you're a seeker with all your heart and you give him your all, he's going to give you his all. Amen? And you'll see miracle signs and wonders take place in your life quickly. Amen? We don't have to wait 30 years for the reaping when you're chasing him with everything you have. God will do it. Maybe not overnight, but he'll do it. It's been eight years I've been around. I can't even believe the things that God has done. It's, it's mind-blowing to me. Um, it's a blessing. I'm in awe every day. Matthew 11, 25, 30. So we know that old habits must be broken off and exchanged with blessed habits or routines. 
So everything old that you were doing, you need to make sure that you're exchanging that every single day. Lord, I exchange my ways for your ways. I exchange my routines for your routine. You know, for me, I didn't know what a blessed routine even looked like when I first came around. I was so used to what I had been dealing with. Um, and God will work with each one of us in the way he sees fit for each one of us to have. He'll build the routine. He'll establish the, the blessed routine. Um, for a lot of us, you know, being in the program, it's pretty much established for us. But there's extra things that God's going to put in there that you're not ordered to do. Amen. And that stuff is going to grow you up big time. When you start letting him influence you in your personal time, in your own time, in your free time, and allowing him to come in and infiltrate that time and teach you and guide you and lead you and, and bring you into a deeper place with him. You know, one of the main problems that people have is a fulfillment problem. They're looking for fulfillment in all the wrong places. Um, and we all know that's why all of us turned out to be drug addicts and chase getting high and chasing money and, and everything else. Um, because the, the true thing that we were looking for was God's presence. Is, and that's where our ultimate fulfillment should always be, is in his presence, in him. We shouldn't be running to the ice cream container when things go bad. We shouldn't be running to the clothing store when things go bad. Um, it shouldn't be our mindset is, I need to go purchase something to make me happy. I need to go eat a bowl of ice cream to make me happy. I need to go spend some money to make me happy. It should be, I need to go to the throne so that I can get my mind back on him. And so that I can be in true peace, not in a false fulfillment, that's going to fade away and then probably bring some kind of um, rejection and fear and anxiety because you probably spent money you shouldn't have spent, you ate something you shouldn't have ate, and now you feel like poop. Amen? The devil's always setting you up to make you feel worse through false fulfillment. Amen? Temporary is no bueno. Seek the Lord, and your fulfillment will be constant. Amen? 1125. Through 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. That's us. Amen. Even so, Father, for, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, or I will give you fulfillment, true fulfillment. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So there must be a constant exchange of the old for the new. There must be a constant exchange of the way we used to seek for fulfillment for our true fulfillment. Amen. And it says, like I said, I wrote down, people have fulfillment problems, which is a lack of God's presence. When you are living in survival mode, you are seeking fulfillment everywhere else but God's presence. We should be doing a daily inventory of the things we look to for fulfillment. So every day we must be seeking ourselves or searching ourselves out, examining ourselves to make sure that um, what we are going to aligns with the Word of God. Is what I'm doing bringing glory to His name? Is it bringing growth in my life? Is it bringing growth to my brothers and sisters around me? Or is it bringing destruction? Is it bringing temporary? Is it bringing false fulfillment? Is it bringing, um, is it being a bad witness to people around? You know, people watch what we do. There's a older brother, older sister um, ordeal that goes on and it goes on everywhere. People are always looking at the person who's supposed to be above them to be a good witness, to be a good mentor, to be a good leader. So it's, it's our job, it's our job and responsibility to make sure that we're being a good witness for those that are coming in after us. Amen. What are you doing that's going to help save somebody's life? What are you doing that's going to help to bring destruction in somebody's life? Amen. Those are questions we always got to be asking ourselves is, am I helping leading people to Christ or away from Christ? Am I driving people out of this house that, that God has brought them to for them to get rescued, set free, and delivered? Am I driving them out because of my actions, my decision-making, the way I'm talking, the things I'm agreeing with, the things that I'm doing? Or are they wanting to stay here because I'm a good influence and I'm, I'm being a good role model for them, manifesting the characters of Christ? These are questions we have to be asking ourselves daily. And it doesn't just stop here. 
You know, there's a time and season where people that come through here, they live here, they come through, and they go back to their life where God has placed them. And you have to be able to do that there as well. If you can't do it here, you ain't going to do it out there. Amen? This is the training ground. This is the house of death and training so that you can bring life and life abundantly out there. Amen? So what you practice here, you're going to practice ten times more out there. That could be positive. That could be negative. Amen? So be mindful. Search yourselves through. Continually take an inventory daily and throughout the day of what is coming in and what is going out. Amen? Proverbs 10. You know, a really sad thing is seeing people that have come to a place of complete and utter surrender. You know, giving it all up, giving it all up, left it at the feet of the Lord, surrendered their entire life, got touched, changed, healed, delivered, and then fallen back into survival. Amen. And that's something that doing a daily examination and even throughout the day, you know, because we pick things up, we go out places, we hear things, we see things, um, we talk to people. Um, we go in grocery stores where there's all kinds of demonic activity, and things try to jump off on us. Amen? So there's got to be a constant examination of what is going on within you. If you start thinking that you're acting a little funny or your eyes start twitching or something like that, step back and examine yourself, man. Ask the Lord, man, what, what's come over me? You know what I'm saying? Get rid of it. I want it gone. Don't turn a blind eye to things that just come up out of nowhere and manifest themselves. Amen? Just because you prayed hard in the morning doesn't mean the devil's not going to try and sneak something in during the day. Proverbs 10, verse 4. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. <laughs> that is the most self-explanatory verse probably in the Bible. We don't need much explanation with that. Um, and I wrote here, doing the bare minimum promotes survival. Amen. If you are somebody who wants to do the bare minimum to get by, you will slowly drift away. Your sowing in the flesh will outweigh your sowing in the spirit, and you will get tossed by the wayside. Amen. Um, you will never reach a place of perfect surrender doing the bare minimum because there will always be open doors. So in this, we know that nothing good comes easy. You have got to work your butt off. Amen. You've got to chase the Lord when you're tired. You've got to stop grumbling, complaining that I've got to go do this, and I've got to be at church after this and all that. Listen, we all have to die. We all have to die. I'm not telling you to do anything I haven't done and don't do still. Amen. Three and a half years, almost four years, I lived in the discipleship houses, managing them, volunteering for every single thing, every single time, late nights never stopping seven days a week, three and a half, four years. It's not easy, but the payout is tremendous. God will bless your socks off. And it's not just about blessing. It's about knowing that you're able to be a blessing. Amen? And that's what the fight is for, to be a blessing to those in need. <laughs> My wife, man, I used to think, I was like, man, that girl's a stinking trooper, man. She rode her bicycle to work for like a year to this store every day from the campus. I mean, people grumble and complain about this and whatever and make excuses and, oh, woe is me and all this. Everybody needs to snap out of it. You're not a victim. Everything you're dealing with right now is because of the choices you made in your life. Amen? So if you don't want to deal with it anymore, make better choices. Choose him, not yourself. Choose him. Stand strong in him, bless him, and allow him to bring everything he has for you. Don't buck the system. Don't try and skip the steps in the process. Submit, surrender to the new. Sever all the old tendencies, all the survival mode, all the nonsense. Sever it all. Go through the process of death, of conversion of your soul, and he will give you a foundation to stand on that can never be broken. Amen. Hallelujah. I wrote here, people need to grow up and take responsibility for their actions. 
bottom line. Nobody put you here other than you. So the hardships you go through, the things you got to deal with, your battles that God has given to you to battle through so that you can become stronger and actually be the man and woman of God that you are called to be are because of decisions you made in your past. So you can't say this person won't do this for me or that person won't help me out or this person that or whatever. You can't point fingers at people. God has brought you to a place to teach you how to be a grown-up. Amen. To survive and be a grown-up in real life. To be able to take care of responsibility like a man and a woman. Not leaning on mommy and daddy. Not leaning on this person or that person. You were brought here to be trained to be a man and woman of God who is able to take care of a household and take care of children, take care of finances, take care of vehicles, take care of possessions, because it's not yours, it's his. And if you squander it and waste it and don't take heed to the training, when things come and you blow it, you're blowing his stuff, not your own. Amen? And if you have that foundation under your feet, you'll never have to worry about losing anything because he will maintain it. Amen? So it's time to put the old behind and grow up. Take responsibility for your actions. Fight the good fight of faith. Die every day. Stop complaining about your death and the things you have to go through. Take the training for what it is. Put it to practice so that you can help somebody else along the way one day. So it's not as hard for them as it was for you. Amen? And, you know, this isn't just a message for people here. This is a message for everybody. I mean, the body of Christ lacks so much of this stuff. It's, it's crazy. People everywhere live in survival mode. They live in survival. They go to church on Sunday. They do the bare minimum. They may tithe a little bit or whatever, and they're in survival mode the whole time. The point and purpose, the destiny, the call of our life is to rescue the lost. Amen? To bring freedom to the captives to warfare in the spirit. We are third dimensional warriors. We warfare in heavenly places. Though you may not see that you're going out there and touching all kinds of lives, you know, in person, but what you're doing behind the scenes is even stronger. Staying steady in your warfare prayer life and the prayers that they have you doing here is vital for so many people out there in the world that do not have anybody warfaring for them. You guys are the saviors behind the scene. Staying faithful to your place and position as a warrior, a spiritual warrior, is vital for children, for women, for kidnapped people, for people that are out there about to be killed, um, for people that need rescue. The prayers are going up, the Lord is answering them, and things are happening. Amen. You've got to keep that mindset. Don't grow weary while doing good. Know that you serve a purpose and you have a destiny, and God is moving through your prayers and through your words. Amen. The devil is such a jerk. He'll try and get you bored and try and say, oh, man, we got to do the same thing every day and, and all this stuff. That is the voice of the stranger. If you start hearing that stuff, you need to tell him to shut up. You need to take responsibility in your life to stay fired up to kick the devil's butt on a daily basis. Because no matter what you're doing, the devil's going to try and come in constantly and get you to a place of weariness and discouragement and thinking that you're not doing anything. You must maintain a fire to bring destruction on the kingdom of Satan and to continue fighting to stay in surrender mode and out of survival mode. Amen. Proverbs 21, 16. A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the unfaithful for the upright. Better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman or man. Amen. There is, a, there is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. Amen. Fruits of survival are compromised. Laziness, frustration, anger, stress, worry, anxiety, pride, grumbling, complaining, 
and being ungrateful. I'll say it one more time. It's a lot of fruit. Fruits of survival are compromise, laziness, frustration, anger, stress, worry, anxiety, pride, grumbling, complaining, and being ungrateful. These fruits will cause you to fall away from God and into the hands of the enemy. So in your examination time, if you are noticing that you are manifesting all of these fruits or even one of these fruits, take dominion over it. And do not get to a place where you say, oh, well, I only do that one thing from time to time because that one thing is going to turn into two, is going to turn into six, is going to turn into you being back out there living a life of survival in the world again. Amen. So whatever it is, you take dominion over it immediately. It is your responsibility to keep your temple clean in every area. Amen. You see anxiety coming up, don't blame it on somebody else or something that somebody did or whatever's going on. It may be somebody else. They may be doing something. But you're responsible for what you do to this temple. Amen. I can't point the finger at anybody in here and say, that person caused me to be anxious. That person caused me to be fearful. Amen. I make the choice to be anxious or fearful. I make the choice to do the things that I'm not supposed to do or agree with the voices that I'm not supposed to agree with. There are influences but I have the power to say no to that influence. Amen? Each and every one in this room has the power to say no to the devil. Amen? So the blame game has to stop. There's no finger pointing. Mark 9, starting at verse 47. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Amen. So we all know that doesn't really mean you go and pluck your eyeball out. Amen. But one of the most powerful things about what God has given us is the power to exchange. Amen. And the power to remove things from our life that are causing distraction, deception, and delusion, and influence that entices you to the flesh. So we know that daily we need to be exchanging our eyes for his eyes so that we see what he sees and that we don't want to see what we used to want to see. Amen? And we need to exchange our ears for his ears so that we are listening for the things that are of him and not focusing on the things that are not of him. Amen? There has to be a complete exchange and change of what you used to like to look at, what you used to like to hear, and what you used to like to do. Amen. And in that, everywhere you go, there are things you hear and there are things you see. What are you allowing in? What are you watching? What are you listening to? What I gather from this scripture is, is if something is drawing me or enticing me to sin, I'm getting rid of it. Amen? You know, there's you got the thinking flesh book that's the most ridiculous thing in the world. And people don't even realize they're just scrolling through this thing and they're they're seeing some good stuff. You know, people posted scriptures and testimonies and all this good stuff. But there's also those dirty, perverted things that are popping up and scrolling through. And that stuff is going in your eye gate. Amen? It's a dangerous place because over time, you're going to start dealing with things and you don't even know why you're dealing with them. You are visually seeing things that you are allowing to take root and come in by not getting rid of it. That stuff needs to be severed. If your eye causes you to sin, you pluck it out. If there's something that you have the power to get rid of and say no to, you get rid of that stinking thing because it's going to draw you into something that you're going to need a rescue from. And it goes for your ears, um, for what you're listening to, for what you're watching in movies. If there's a movie you're watching or whatever and it's something that you know is a bad influence, take that stinking thing out, man. Don't, oh, I'm going to fast forward that. If there's that, then there's probably going to be six other things in there. Amen? Take dominion over these things. The devil is a sly dog. 
he is doing whatever he can to slither in to God's people and bring destruction, distraction, and cause them to live a life of survival. And people are standing by and letting them do it every single day because they're too weak to deny the flesh. They're too ridiculous, I'm going to use that word, to just say no. I don't care if I can't look at this anymore. I don't care if I can't use this anymore. I don't care if I can't go over here anymore. I want to be pure. I want to be sanctified, set apart for him. I want my direct connection with the throne room to not be interfered with. I'm getting rid of it. If it comes in between me and him, it's got to go, period. And that goes for everybody and anything. They got to go. And that's not me talking. That's the word of God. And we'll get to another one that talks about that as well. Let me see here. So we went through the fruits of survival. So if there is something enticing you to sin or to fall into an old habit, you must get rid of it. We must constantly exchange our eyes, ears, and hearts for God's. Proverbs 13. So nobody here is a victim, right? Everybody here is a warrior who's been empowered to take dominion and authority over every area of their life. All right, Proverbs 13, 3 through 4. It says, he who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. There must be a conscious effort to identify open doors and a true heart of repentance to close them and keep them closed. This takes hard work and discipline. We'll go to John 2. We'll start at verse 13. It says, Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves, and money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. I just want to stop there for a second. This needs to be what we are doing with ourselves daily. Amen. We have got to take the whip and the cord and get rid of everything that the enemy is trying to contaminate our temple with. Amen. We cannot allow the things of our past, the things that we come into contact with, to contaminate what God has done in us. We have got to constantly keep this mindset that Jesus had in the temple of keeping it clean and pure and sanctified, set apart for him. Let's continue on. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. So we must have zeal to keep our temple clean. And that goes for every area. That goes for what you eat. That goes for what you look at. That goes for what you listen to. Every single area. You've got to make sure that we're maintaining a clean temple. So the Jews answered and said to him, what sign do you show to us since you do these things? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Survival mode keeps you from living in a warrior's mindset. We must take care of our temple. It is vital to bind the strong man at every location we go to. And when you leave, shake the dust off. People have no idea that the things they see and hear in passing have a demonic effect on them. Repent and get rid of it and get rid of what is enticing you. Amen. So that, you know, it sounds crazy, but everywhere you go, everywhere I go and everywhere you go, you need to be binding the strong man in that place. I don't care where it is. If it's the gas station, if it's the gym, if it's Publix, if it's Walmart, when you pull up in that place, you bind the strong man, you take dominion and authority over that territory and over every spirit in that place, you drive them out, you claim every soul in that place for the kingdom of God, you go in there and do what you got to do, and then you shake the dust off and you leave that place. 
because they got all kinds of crazy music and crazy influences in that place that will try and jump off on you and go back with you. And this is the mindset that we have to be in. This was the mindset of Jesus. Everywhere he went, he cleaned it. It stayed clean. He didn't allow anything to attach itself to him. And that's the zeal that we must have with our temples, spirit, soul, and body. We have to keep it clean. And in order to keep it clean spiritually, you have to keep it clean physically as well. Amen? The physical and the spiritual line up with your body. And I know we just had a big thing about sweets and sugar and carbs and all that stuff that, you know, everybody's, you know, going to have a hard time dealing with. But the blessing from it is going to be beyond measure. I'm telling you right now, if I go and I eat a bunch of sugar, my brain does not function the way it's supposed to function. And, you know, coming off of all that was, it's not easy. But the bottom line is, it is an addiction. It is an addiction. It's a bondage that has to be broken. And I'm telling you right now, your mind and your body will thank you for it. Your connection with the throne room of God will, be, will blow your mind because there will be clarity like never before. You will be able to hear. You will be able to see. You will be able to receive from him better than you ever have. And the devil wants to do everything he can to stop that. And what better way to use it from a legal substance that is easy and free to get pretty much to anybody and everywhere to contaminate the minds of God's people, to block their clarity and their hearing and their vision from the throne room. Amen. So we must have a zeal to destroy that stuff, not be bitter and bound up and grumble and complain and be frustrated about it. You must say, Lord, thank you for this smack upside the head. I'm taking it like a grown-up, and I'm going to use it and put it to practice so that I can be useful for your kingdom, so that I can move when you tell me to move, so that I can be where you tell me to be and say what you tell me to say and not miss it. Amen? And we're going to close with 2 Thessalonians 2. Don't beat yourself up. Don't condemn yourself. If you blow it, if you make a mistake, um, I'm not condoning that you go steal a cookie and then repent. It's not what I'm saying at all. You know better. But people make mistakes. They have a hard time. They struggle. They battle. The bottom line here is you have the power, dominion, and authority to say no. Put it to practice. There is an anointing in each and every one here in this place to tell the devil to go back to hell you have no place in me today. Amen? But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother or sister who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. So what does that mean? Associations bring impartations. Amen? And this goes along with the whole, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. We do not need to be associating with individuals who are living in straight rebellion. It will contaminate you. God did not bring you to a place to say, well, I need to go rescue them, and I need to go over here, and I need to do this. The devil will get your butt out there and snatch you up. God will send you when it's time, and he will position you when you need to be positioned to do stuff like that. Um, you just stay faithful with him, and he'll bring opportunities like that. And it, it also goes for, you know, brothers and sisters in the house. If there's somebody constantly grumbling and complaining and talking smack, Rebuke them and get away from them. Don't hang out with them. You are, you are not forced to be in somebody's room or be in somebody's presence. There's plenty of places around the house and out in the yard you can go to and get away. Rebuke them, report them, and stay away. Don't allow anybody to contaminate your atmosphere. Amen? Nor did we eat anyone's bread free. For you yourselves, let's go back to seven. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. Not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone will not work, Neither shall he eat. 
For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and, and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with them, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Hallelujah. So make sure that you're being the witness you need to be so that you don't be part of the problem of keeping people living in a survival mode. Cause people to want to come out of the old life by the influence that you are. Amen. Steady. Be steady in searching your temples out. Keep yourself clean. Be sanctified, set apart for him. Be a good witness. And love and bless him at all times. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we love you and bless you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you and we give you glory, Lord. We thank you for freedom. We thank you for truth. We thank you for this house, Lord. We thank you for Pastor and Kate and everything that they have done to help bring us to a place where we can be completely and totally free. Cause us, Lord, to take heed to everything that you give to us, Lord, so that we may put it to practice and give it to other people, Father. Cause us to take a daily examination of ourselves, not pointing the finger, but allowing you to work on us so that we can be who you've called us to be. We love you and we bless you. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.